All right, so in this video, I'm just going to continue with the practice questions on topic two, electric flux. And we're talking about Gauss's law as well right now. So looking at this question here, question 44, the figure below shows the distribution of charges. The flux due to these charges on the surface X, uh, S sorry, is what? Which ones do we count? From the previous video, I told you it's only the enclosed charge that is counted. I have two Qs inside and a Q outside. The flux from the Q outside will cancel. It will come in and out. If you remember, this will be positive 1, cos of 0. This is 180 costs of minus 1, they will cancel each other out. So Q is not included. For the flux, only these two. So the rule is Q over epsilon, but there are two Qs, so I must say 2Q over epsilon. That would be my answer. Four charges are placed in space. They have these magnitudes. If a Gaussian surface encloses all of the charges, what will be the flux to the surface? So if I just take a surface and I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four charges, plus three, I'll write it out now, plus 3 minus q, which is minus 1, plus 2 minus 7 equals negative 3. My overall flux, adding the enclosed cubes together, will be minus 3 over epsilon. There we go. Moving on, then uh, electric flux through a Gaussian surface centered about this radius. What happens if I take a cube? So all I'm doing now is I'm changing the shape. I had a circle before, I'll just draw this one here. Instead of the circle, I'm going to draw a cube. Well, if you look at it, I'm still enclosing the same charge. It doesn't matter what I do, the enclosed charge is the same. We're using the rule Q enclosed over epsilon. Because we have a Q enclosed, we will use that one. We don't need E, A, because we have a Q enclosed. So it'll be exactly the same. It doesn't matter which shape I do it, it's still enclosed. So if originally it was 1200, it'll be equal to 1200, it'll be the same. Over here we have a charge and the center of a cube. What is the flux through one side of the cube? So it's uh, giving you a one meter cube, so it's kind of thinking that you're going to use EA, but we are smarter than that. We are not going to be tricked by the question. We know we have an enclosed charge, so I will just go ahead and use Q over epsilon. Why not? I'm going to write 3.5 over epsilon naught, which is given to you on your front page, which is uh, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And you're going to actually, it's one side. So at the end of it, I'm going to divide it by 6. So I'll get my answer, and then I'll divide it by 6. So I can just uh, write uh, 6 underneath here, 6 times, or 1 over 6, or whatever you want to do. You're taking that number, and then again divide it by 6, because we've already agreed there are 6 sides to a cube. Here is another expertly drawn cube for you to realize that there are actually 6 sides in the cube. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So solving that, putting that into your calculator, you should get 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of 10. All right. Over here, this is now asking which ones will contribute to the electric field. Electric field, not the flux. Be careful now. It's asking you which ones are called about the field. Every charge has a field. Every charge has a field line passing through it. This one just happens to cancel itself out when it comes to the flux. But it still has the field. This is coming inwards as well. So these are coming out, out, and in. They all contribute to the field, not the flux. So D would be the answer. For the flux, it would just be the enclosed charge. Okay, be very careful with that. Uh, inside the sphere, you have a charge. What is the flux through the surface of the sphere? Um, you're just going to use the same formula, Q enclosed. So I'll just do flux equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught, and I have two Qs enclosed. I'll have, uh, they're both minus 6, so 5.3 uh, minus 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 6. I wonder if that can work. It saves me writing it two times, because they're both times 10 to the minus 6. Hopefully that works. Over 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Solving that, and you should hopefully get your correct answer of 3.5 times 10 to the 5. Which of the following could be true for a Gaussian surface with the net flux is zero? And the net flux is zero, there are no charges inside. Yes, if there are no charges inside, there's no Q enclosed, which means there'll be no flux at all. It'll be nothing, because if it's outside, it cancels each other out. The net charge enclosed by the surface is zero. Yes, I could have a minus one and a plus one. Minus one plus one equals zero. That will be zero anyway. They will cancel each other out, that is true. 
If the electric field is zero, well, of course, if there's no field lines passing, if there's nothing field, nothing at all, then of course there'll be no flux. The flux, again, is the number of field lines passing through an area. Okay, so that means there is nothing. So all of them are correct in this case. So moving on over here, what have I done? I've actually already solved it. Uh, why? I must have done it in class. A point charge is at the center of the cube. The flux through one side is this. Um, if you remember the, the idea, uh, flux equals Q over epsilon naught. And all we're going to do is just we're going to times it by 6, really. You take the flux, this number here, you can multiply it by 6 over Q over 8.85. You can solve for this. So literally I'm going to do 7.2 times 10 to the 10. Um, I can write it as a formula like we did before. This can be x if you want to do shift solve. 6 epsilon times uh, 8.85, that number there. Okay, I'll write that here. You can, no, oh, that doesn't look very neat at all. Let me do it properly. 6.65 times 10, uh, 6, uh, 8, sorry, what am I doing? 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Uh, you can shift solve here, or you can take the 6 and you can multiply by it and so on, you'll get Q. You're just rearranging to get Q. If you do that, you will get the answer, hopefully, 3.8, which I've already done here, okay? So, two ways to solve it, really. Multiply that by 6 and then rearrange for Q, or just keep it in the formula. This is the standard general formula. Flux equals Q over epsilon, and because there are six sides, I have to also divide by six, just like I did over here. I just take this rule, and instead I'm solving for Q. I already had Q over here, but in this one, I am solving for Q. So it's the same. All right, let's move on. Over here, we have a conducting sphere. Okay, this is all really annoying me, so let me just get rid of that. There we go. The total flux through any concentric shell, comparing them, again, I don't care about the radius. It doesn't matter if it's a smaller one or a bigger one. So what's going to happen is it's going to be the same. So it does not care about R. It's independent to R. Two concentric spheres are drawn around this. So this is basically what this was explaining. Now, the inner surface has a smaller radius. And again, I do not care about the radius for flux. For the field, maybe. The field I will care about, E equals KQ over R squared. There is an R in that formula. But for the flux, no. A uniform field with a magnitude of this passes through a rectangle of this. The angle is this. What is the flux through it? So we can just figure out the angle. If I was to draw, uh, let me see if I'll draw a rectangle. Here is my rectangle. And I have um, a flux passing through. The angle between the field and the normal, good, because this is my normal pointing outwards. And the angle between the field and the normal is exactly what I need. I need this angle. This is 65. So I'm going to use the angle of 65. I don't need to do 90 minus. If it said the surface and the, uh, the, the, surface and the field, then it's a problem. The plane and the field, then it's a problem. This is not a problem. The electric field vector and the vector normal to the plane. So the vector normal to the plane and the electric field vector, 65. OK, so I'm spending too much time explaining that. Let's just actually go ahead and solve it. In this case, we have an area. Uh, we don't have an enclosed charge. So flux, I cannot use Q over epsilon naught anymore. I must use Ea dot product, so Ea cos theta, Ea cos theta. I will do E. What is my E? I have it, 125,000. 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 3. Multiply that by area. And it's a rectangle, so length times width. I will do the length times width, 2.50. Multiplied by 5. I am terrible with spacing. Uh, cos of 65. Putting that into my calculator, I will get the answer that I've just covered up. The answer is B. This is the solution if you solve it. And uh, that is horrible. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. Question 55. A point charge is located at A, a second is located at minus A, a Gaussian surface with R is 2A at the origin, the flux to the Gaussian surface. So basically, what am I doing? Am I covering them both or not? I have uh, a point charge, this is A, and the negative uh, charge is at negative A, so this can be A, positive. And then we have minus A. I will write minus A. And this is my charge of negative. And I have a radius centered at the origin. So this is the origin. And the radius is 2A. The radius is 2A. So that's A. That's 2A. That's my radius. 
the armature would be all the way along. That radius goes all the way around, 2A. That radius, A, 2A. So, looking at that, they're both enclosed. If they're both enclosed, that means it will be zero. Nicely done. All right. A hollow conducting sh um, shell given an even, even distribution of charge. And what's going to happen here? Well, we are looking outside. What is the direction of the field inside the hollow sphere? The idea, this is electrostatic shielding. This will cancel with, its, with itself. The field inside will be zero. You are protected inside this shell. Um, over here now, we're going to have to figure out what's going to happen. So is there going to be a force on something or not? Well, this has a field coming out, this has a field going in, but cancels. It cancels. This gets cancelled. But this one doesn't get cancelled. This one comes out. So this person, or this charge, is safe from this. Again, electrostatic shielding. That's the whole idea of this, a Faraday cage, protection from thunderstorms and things. You're safe inside, but you're not safe outside. He has a field, he will feel the force, he will feel something. So there is a net force on Q2, but not on Q1 directly, there's the answer. Okay, so he will not feel a force about this, okay? And that is done over here, so let's move on to the next page. Over here we now have a charge of plus two is placed at the center of an uncharged shell. What will be the inner and surface? So the shell itself is uncharged. So what am I talking about? Let's take uh, a positive two here. And then I'm going to put a shell around it, a shell like that. That's my shell. This will attract minuses on the inside, and it will repel the pluses on the other side. If it's plus two, I can only attract the same amount. I can only attract negative two. That means the outer must be plus two, because the total is zero. Um, if you remember the, the rule that we made up, Q total equals, that's a T, Q inner plus Q outer. Q inner and outer is the total. Total is zero. Minus two plus two equals zero. So that means A is good. Minus two plus two. Over here, which represents the charge distribution of our surface? Remember, you do need to identify the formula. You won't need to use them, but you need to identify them. There are three formulas you need to think about. You have the general density formula that we know about for the volume. So the rho, this is same as chemistry, rho. Um, it's not mass over volume. It's actually charge over volume. It's not the mass density we're talking about. It's the charge density, Q over V. Then we have changed the symbol to that to figure out the surface area so it's q over the area and then we have the linear density lambda line linear lambda that's why they used it and um, which is my q over a straight line so l i am ask for asking for surface surface means area so i need to see these symbols in my question and uh, that does not have that that doesn't have it oh look at that that does we have the density and we have that so all these fancy shapes and symbols forget them this is the formula. I have identified it. This has just been rearranged. You just take the A to the other side and you multiply by it. That's all. There you go. Nicely done. Moving on. Here we go. In order to use Gauss's law to calculate, what must we know? And again, I, this is exactly the same question as before. Uh, we have to have symmetry. A high degree of symmetry. See the word symmetry? You know that's probably the correct answer. High degree of symmetry. It must be symmetrical. Uh, over here, the electric field for a long wire, you may need to identify the formula, and we have done this. I've done this in the PowerPoints as well, so you can go back and check it. The way to find that is 2K lambda over R. I'm not going to go into details in it here. If you want to understand why and where we got the formula from, please go back to the PowerPoint which talks about this stuff, okay? It's in the same playlist. Now, which of the following Gaussian surfaces will be simplest to determine the electric field near a long straight wire? So if I was to do a long straight wire, again, it's all in the PowerPoint. We've drawn a cylinder around the wire. We draw the cylinder around the wire, you can find the field around it, okay? A cylinder that is in the same axis. It's not perpendicular, cylinder does not go like this. No, that's wrong. It's in the same axis. So it coincides with the wire. The axis, the, the direction, the direction, coincides coincidence that means the same 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 okay an insulating solid sphere has a volume charge density 
and uh, the center electric field inside the sphere of distance r. So essentially, again, um, I know I'm keeping referring you to the PowerPoint. The video is going to get far too lengthy otherwise. Uh, the general rule that we eventually figured out for the electric field inside an insulating sphere was kqr over a cubed. This A is the actual volume of the sphere. R is the radius that we're talking about. It's directly proportional to the radius. It's directly proportional to the radius, which means it's that one here. If I said 1 over A cubed, if this was A cubed, like that is, this could have been also correct. But it is not. This is squared. R cubed and R squared are wrong. It is directly proportional, just R. Not 1 over either, just R. So this is above in the formula, so that means it's directly. If I'm dividing in the formula, it's inversely. Just a little quick tip there for you. Now, moving on. This is talking about the, the field between two infinitely long, so single infinitely long flat sheet. Uh, we did derive it again. If you wanted to find the electric field, you need to know the density over 2 epsilon naught. You can go back to the same video. All of these formulas are actually derived in the same video, so you can check them all together at one time if you're not sure about them. Question 65, the diagram shows two charged plates, and then you confirm or rank the positions 1, 2, and 3. Now, as I said to you, electric field is uniform. 2 and 3 will be the same. 1 is outside, so 1 is not going to, it's actually going to be 0, will cancel out. So 2 and 3 are equal, and they're greater than 1. 2 and 3 are, so that's wrong, that's wrong. 2 and 3 are equal, greater than 1, this is correct. And I'm going to stop that there for, the, for this video. Thank you.